Premiere Pro and After Effects go hand in hand. Actually, do we even need Premiere? Well, if you're a serious video editor aiming to be professional, learning After Effects is a must. Stuff like masking, tracking, creating effects, or making simple animations become much more efficient than After Effects, and the results speak for themselves. Today, we're comparing must-know editing techniques both in Premiere and After Effects. Number 1. Masking Masking is a powerful tool in Premiere Pro and After Effects, but the way they handle is very different. In Premiere Pro, masking is straightforward and great for simple tasks like blurring a face. All you need to do is click the pen tool on the Gaussian blur effect, for example. Then in the program monitor, you can draw a mask on your effect. The adjustments you then make in the effect will only be applied to the inside of the mask. This is great for simple stuff, but in Premiere, masking feels clunky and it doesn't always do what you expect it to do. For example, when you try to adjust a mask point, you kind of have to hope it selects the correct one, or sometimes it randomly starts rotating the entire mask. It's annoying. But when you start masking in After Effects, things become interesting. You can easily open up After Effects the good old way, or you can right-click your clip in the timeline and choose Replace with After Effects Composition. This will then, of course, open up After Effects. Right here, you will see the clip you've just right-clicked in Premiere. Let me rename it real quick. Now, everything you do in here will be applied to your clip in Premiere's timeline. This is called Dynamic Link, by the way, which doesn't always work very well. Masking in After Effects is easy. You just select the clip you want to create a mask on and on top, you'll select the pen tool. Then click and drag to create a mask and you instantly notice how much more precise the mask behaves compared to Premiere's. It's extremely simple to adjust one of your points and this will never bug out like it does in Premiere. Now to access the mask settings, simply expand the layer in the timeline and there you'll see the same mask settings as in Premiere. Now you also have some other features that you won't have in Premiere. As you already know, you can feather a mask in Premiere, which is very useful. In After Effects, you can do the same. Great! But there's a tool called the Mask Feather tool that allows you to only feather specific parts of your mask. To access it, click and hold the pen tool on top until you see this menu. Then choose the Feather tool. With this tool, you can click and drag your mask to increase the feather. Very nice, but you can also click and create multiple points. This will allow you to make the feather smaller or bigger on different places. This is something I used in my fire bending effect, for example. Very nice. Number two is a quick one, creating 3D animations. In Premiere, you have to use the basic 3D effect to create a somewhat 3D looking animation. This works, but keyframing in Premiere is painful. In After Effects, you can simply enable the 3D toggle and your transform properties will become a little bigger. These can be used alongside the usual properties and are extremely simple to keyframe. And let me tell you, keyframing in After Effects is like putting Premiere on steroids, but more on that later. Now, to create this fire bending effect, I actually downloaded this fire asset from the Storyblocks plugin. This is both for After Effects and Premiere, by the way. You can download unlimited stock assets without leaving Premiere. All you need to do is click the download button and and boom, your clips will appear in the project panel. Storyblocks, thank you so much for sponsoring this video. Storyblocks' is curated stock library has everything you need to create high quality video in one place. With over a million 4K and HD footage, templates, music, sound effects, images, and more, you can download unlimited high quality assets for just one predictable subscription cost. You can say goodbye to these expensive paperclip pricing. Now just imagine crashing your drone when trying to capture beautiful drone shots. Yeah, you, you should have used Storyblocks. You will enhance your social media videos by accessing exclusive Storyblocks label music tracks directly in TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. At the meantime, Storyblocks will fully protect you from copyright strikes, claims, and all that stuff. That way you can focus on what actually matters creating. Besides that, you will save hours of your time with pre-made motion graphics templates for After Effects, Premiere Pro, Apple Motion and DaVinci Resolve. To get started with unlimited stock media downloads at one set price, head over to starblocks.com slash Premiere Basics or just click the link down below. Number 3. Keyframes If you compare keyframing in Premiere with keyframing in After Effects, you will see a huge difference. It's almost not comparable, it's like comparing GTA 3 graphics with GTA 6. So here you can see three assets, a background, a Premiere PNG and a Cursor PNG. Let's create a basic animation. So first I want the Premiere logo to bounce in with a subtle rotate. To do that, I'll have to find the transform effect, if I want motion blur of course. Once you have it applied to your clip, go to the effect 
controls. Now set a position and rotation keyframe. Then move the player to the beginning of your clip and rotate the PNG just a little. Then adjust the position so the logo moves to the bottom. That will create a simple slide in animation. Now to ease in the keyframes, expand the velocity curves for both the properties. Then pull the lever of the second keyframe and do that for both the properties. Unfortunately, we can't pull both of them at the same time. So we kind of have to gamble and try to match the curves with each other. This is really painful Adobe. Fix this. Then to add motion blur, increase the shutter angle to 180 degrees. All right, that looks solid. But now let me show you how to do it in After Effects. Of course, select your assets in the timeline and again, send it to Adobe After Effects. Now create the exact same animation in here. This already feels a lot smoother. Now to ease the keyframes, select the last one of both the properties and hit F9. Then go to the velocity curves on top and select both the curves like this. Now pull the lever of the second keyframe. We just eased in both the position and the rotation properties, so the curve will look exactly the same. Now to add motion blur, simply enable the motion blur toggle, which is something by the way that Premiere doesn't have. Fix it Adobe. And that looks really cool. Next, you need to check out these five editing mistakes you're probably making in the next lesson on my left. Thank you guys so much for watching.